think about a, a different type of life cycle that doesn't have the problem of creating the product at the end of the project. Do you need time? Okay. This is the alternative that we can have. Instead of running the development processes one at a time, we can have some partitions of time. Let's call them iteration. We'll talk about that later. We can have these partitions of time and inside each of those partitions, we will run the development processes for a subset of features. What we do is that we just pick a few features for the first iteration and at the end, we will create a piece of working software, something that the end users can potentially use. And then we will show it to the customer and to the end users. We will have conversations over that. We will receive feedback. And using that feedback, we will decide about the features that we're going to have for the second iteration. We'll focus on them, run the development processes inside that iteration, create a new product, a new version of the product with more features, receive feedback, and do it again and again. And as you see here, instead of having an upfront plan and following that plan, we just go on with a strategy, of course, it's not chaos. We just go on, create products as soon as possible, show it to the customer, receive feedback, and we adapt. We are adapting to the environment, to the needs of the customer, and it works very well because we are using the product to understand what the customer wants instead of writing on paper. Based on practice, it works much better. Based on experience, it works much, much better. It really works. That's great. And we need an, another name here. What would you like to call it? We can call it adaptive. It's an adaptive life cycle. And the other name for this is agile. You have an Agile project when you are using an adaptive life cycle. And I forgot to tell you, but the one that we talked about before, the predictive life cycle, nowadays people who are in the Agile community call them waterfall. We don't call them waterfall if they are used outside IT development. It's just about the terms. And you also need to know that waterfall is practically used as a curse word. That's why I prefer to call them predictive life cycle because they are not bad things. None of these are bad. Each of them are more appropriate, appropriate to certain types of project, which we will talk about in next lessons. Now, let's get back to this adaptive life cycle here. You see that we have multiple partitions of time, right? And inside each of those things, we will repeat all the development life cycles, the, uh, analyze, design, construct, integrate, and test. We repeat them. We are iterating. And that's why it's called, these partitions are sometimes called iterations. And this type of development is called iterative development because we repeat those things. It's about learning these phrases, okay? And there's another phrase that is common here, and many people confuse it with iterative development. That's about the fact that we are creating the product in multiple versions, let's call them. The first version has only a few features. In the next one, we, we will have the few previous features and we add a few more. And we keep adding more and more features on that. Your product gets bigger and more valuable and so on. So in fact, we are delivering the product in multiple increments. This is called incremental delivery. So you see the difference between incremental delivery and iterative development? They usually come together. It's very difficult to think about having one of them without the other, but still there are two different concepts that are usually together. All right, so that's the predictive life cycle, also known as waterfall. And this is adaptive life cycle, also known as agile. This is the real meaning of agility. Everything else that you hear is just describing some aspect of agility. This is the real thing. And if you understand how it works, then it's much easier for you to 
solve your day-to-day -day problems and answer questions in the exam. Now, for example, here I have a question for you. How do you see the difference, the difference in planning for these two types of life cycle? I'm asking this because a common thing for people is that they believe that agile is when you don't plan the project. I already say that my point is that we still plan projects in agile. So that's going to be the answer. But think about the difference between planning in these two types of life cycle. We'll talk about it in the next lesson.